emulator. We start off by opening the BlackBerry browser on the BlackBerry handheld device and log into the app server web address. Once we log into the app server web address, we will then have applications available to us presented. I'll go ahead and launch Goldmine Mobile. And what's going to happen here is App Server is going to launch Goldmine Mobile in a terminal server session, which we're going to bring up in the background in a moment. And it's going to present back to me a screen that I can use to log into Goldmine and begin using the Goldmine application. Here is the Goldmine client running on the terminal server in the terminal server session. So we'll see live interaction between the simulator and the application. Pay particular attention to the background as I start to do things and interact with the application. You will see the real application on the terminal server being used in real time. Once we've logged into Goldmine, Goldmine opens up, it's ready for use. A menu will be returned to the user where they'll be able to begin using the application. Um, in this version, I've built in functionality to search contacts, add a new company slash contact, show your calendar, or close the application. We'll go into search contacts because the majority of the functionality is ac accessed through uh, searching your contacts. So we'll get the link. We're going to choose or enter some search criteria. And this is going to go out, open up the search contact screen, plug in information as you see that I've actually entered in through the web browser on the device. It's going to actually put it into the application. So we're driving the application through the UI. And here's the list of the results. I'm going to choose apps to mobile. Once I choose apps to mobile, it's going to return to me the account details for apps to mobile. That's the information we see here. And I can see information such as the contact, the title, main phone, email, mobile, fax, the address, website. Uh, when you're using a BlackBerry browser, even a Palm browser for that matter, like a Blazor browser, uh, you have the built-in functionality to simply click on a number and call that number. You also could do the same thing for email. You can click on an email address and email that. So I'll go to the top here and see some of the functionality that we have. I can return to the main menu if I choose. I can add an activity, which adding an activity is adding a sale, adding a call, adding an appointment. I can show my calendar. I can view my additional contacts. I can go back and search my contacts again to see if there's somebody different I want to see, or I can close the application out. We're going to first of all choose Add Activity. I can come into here and say I want to add an activity. I want to add a sale, add a call, or add an appointment. I'll go ahead and add a call. We'll call Ray. The date's already in there. We'll leave it for today. We'll choose a time. We'll call Ray at 7 a.m. I'll choose to add this. As you'll see, it's going to launch the Add a Schedule Call dialog, plug in the information that we've put in, and schedule this call. It works in the exact same fashion for appointments and sales. Now we come back to our list and I can go back and access other components of the menu. For instance, I'll do Show Calendar, and this is going to open up the calendar. It's going to pull today's appointments over and display them to me. As I can see here, here's the one I just scheduled. I can see other appointments in sales that I have listed here for today. Another feature we've added into this is to go next day, prior day. So if a user is looking at their calendar, uh, they can go in and go back one day, go forward one day very easily. Um, or we can choose to go to a specific date. So what we can do here is say next day. And this is going to 
change the focus on the calendar, pull those appointments over, and display them for the user. Now if I wanted to, the appointments that I have, the existing ones, I'm able to edit these or complete them. For instance, we have a forecasted sale here, and I'll open up that forecasted sale and say I'm going to complete activity or edit activity. We'll say we'll complete activity, As you're going to see here in the background, it pulled open complete a sale. It read in some data. I've displayed it here for you. Now I can put in my results. Change option is sold. Say lost sale or closed sale. We close the sale. And then when I choose complete, you're going to see that updated. and it's going to bring you back to the calendar and refocus on the calendar. Once I'm done inside the calendar, I can choose done and leave the calendar. Bring me back to my account details. At this point I can go in and view my additional contacts. When I view my additional contacts, I'm seeing the list that you see here at the bottom, displayed here. On it too, I can choose to call them. We have add a contact and account details. That will allow me to either add a contact or I can go back to my account details. I can go into my additional contacts and view this particular one and say I either want to add an activity or display and edit the additional contact. So I can edit information about the additional contact. I can come here and say add an activity, add a call, call Andy, nine AM, choose add, and it's going to schedule that call for Andy this time instead of Arthur. and return us to the main screen. So as you can see there's a, a bit of functionality built in here. What we've built into it is the ability to search your contacts, view the details of your contacts, add sales, calls, appointments, edit and close sales, calls and appointments, view your additional contacts, add additional contacts, and edit those additional contacts. I'll go back now to my main menu. and allow me to begin working again if I wanted to say you know close the application I can show my calendar from here if I choose I can add a new company from here I can also go back and search my contacts again we'll go ahead and say close gold mine and this will close the application down in the session for the user's browser and on the terminal server closing uh, the application out for good if the user wants to access it again they can simply click here to restart and then once again log back in using their Windows credentials and begin using it again.